Welcome to the sixth video in this series on creating atmospheric nighttime visuals in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video we're going to be looking at how to create a water texture for the foreground of our scene here and we're going to be following on from the video we did last time where we were setting up our base materials for our scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a kind of pool of water that sits in the foreground of this view and reflects our building and sky up here. Now to start with we're going to just model the water by just modeling a big cube over the whole scene um, and I'll do this just using the kind of box tool modeling it down and giving it some thickness and the reason we're doing this as a kind of box is because we're going to want to add a kind of depth to our water as well and we can use the kind of volume of the box to do this. Now once we've got that we're just going to sort of move it slowly into the scene until we can see it. And you can see here in my camera view I just want to kind of get it so it's just sort of framing the bottom piece like so. So we're because we've made our terrain we can just sort of move that ground up and down for our water to put it into place. Now I'm going to make a new layer for that water as well and we're going to move the object onto that layer and let's just make this a kind of dark greeny blue like so. And I might want to just differentiate it from the grass a bit so let's make it a little bit darker and a little bit more blue. There we go. So now we've made that we're going to start making the material and actually water is very easy to make in its first instance and then we're going to kind of fine tune it in a couple of ways as well to add a bit of complexity. So I'm going to open up my frame buffer here and we'll start rendering so we can see this as we edit it. But what we'll start by doing is just making a new generic asset like so and we'll call this water. Now we're going to just apply this to that surface like so and we don't need to texture map this one because we can do all the sizing in the object. So in here we're going to make the color kind of black and essentially we're just going to start with a glass material. So we'll do a color of black reflection color of white to give us that nice reflection. Now we've got our kind of mirrored surface there and a refraction of white as well to make it kind of see through to the floor below. So let's sort of zoom in so we can see this in a bit more detail there. So now we've got that kind of base look. We then want to add the ripples to our water to make it look like a kind of ripply surface on here. And to do that, just like we added the brick texture to the glass in the previous video, we're going to be using the bump map in order to kind of give us some texture on this water surface. So in the bump we're going to just click on the texture slot and we're going to scroll down and go and find this noise B map here. Now in this we can essentially create ripples on the surface of the water and depending on the size of the cube you've drawn you're going to now need to lower the size of your water right down in order to see it. So I usually start with something like a kind of 0 0.01 and there you can see we've got it but it's still very very big so let's add another sort of decimal place in there maybe one more and that might be a bit too small so we can make it a bit bigger in there so I think somewhere between those two and this all depends on the size of the original cube you made so you'll just need to sort of dial it back and forth until you get the kind of right size now also with this I want the ripples to be a little bit softer. At the moment they're very kind of rigid and we can't really see the reflection anymore because it's become distorted. So in order to kind of lower down that sort of bumpiness we can click on the back button here and go back to our base material. And under bump we've got this amount value and we're just going to lower that down as well to a much lower value. And I think I'll do this as a 0 0.01 as well and there we're getting our nice sort of ripples on the water there. and actually that's looking pretty good already. It might be that you want to just play around with the sizing or the amount to kind of make it more or less bumpy but I think for the purpose of what I want I think around there maybe in between those two is about right for the purpose of this particular texture. Now we can also sort of change the fog color of this water if you want to give it a color tint and you might want to change the sort of color of the material below the water as well. As you can see at the moment we can see the grass below that water. It might be that you want to make it a little bit more muddy below that bank. So what we're going to do is let's just stop the render here. We're going to start by just splitting up 
that texture plane to an object above the water and an object below that water level. To do this, I'm going to create a really big horizontal plane, like so. Just move it so it covers the kind of ground texture. And then we're going to move it down, lock it vertically, and snap it to the very top of that water edge, like so. So it just sits on top of the water. Once we've done that, we're then going to use the split tool here. We're going to select the object to split, which is our terrain here, hit enter, and then select this big cutting tool that we just made, this big plane. What that would do is if we delete that plane, it's then split that object into two halves. We've got the bit below the water and the bit above the water there. And I'm actually going to take the bit below the water and put it on a new layer called mud. Like so. Let's make this a kind of orangey colour and just move this onto that mud layer. And with that object, we're then just going to give it a new material. So in our materials texture, I'm going to make a new material, generic, we'll call this mud. Just typing in the name there, there we go. And then we're going to just add in a kind of texture image for that. And I've just got this sort of muddy, sort of twiggy texture there, which we can drop in for that piece. And then let's just apply that to that surface there, like so. Now, if we then kind of open up our render again, and we just re-render this view out here, now have a look at what that's looking and you can see it's already just darkened up the water just by darkening up that surface below it makes it much more reflective now it looks a little bit warped below the water there so we need to texture map this as well um, it's good to just start by seeing what it's on it's on 15 by 15 so let's just lower that down to a kind of three by three and that looks a little bit better there maybe even lower actually we can go and there we can see some pieces below the water there but suddenly that's looking a lot sort of nicer below that water line it might be that you also want to tint the water to be a certain color and quite often it might be a sort of darkish green or sort of a more muddy color as well and we can use the fog color to do that just like we did with the glass now if we locate our water texture again so go to that refraction under the fog color and let's find, I'm going to go for sort of like turquoisey colour. And same again, we're going to put it down. We can actually change the depth of this fog as well to sort of make this a little bit less bright. Or if we up that depth value, it will actually kind of have the effect of sort of lowering the value of that fog. But as you can see, as with the fog before, it's quite kind of hard to get it looking lighter so you need to really just lower down that saturation to a point where it's just on the cusp of the two so i think somewhere around there we're giving it a little bit of green tint but not too much and i think that's kind of working quite nicely there so there we've got our kind of water texture in there and that was just a kind of quick overview of how we would start adding water into this scene now the next video we're going to be adding in some assets to the grass to give a bit more texture to this landscape surface. We're also going to be scattering some small sort of flowers and other plants in here to essentially add to the landscape features in this scene. But we're just going to be kind of building up the layers now to start to kind of increase the complexity in our visual and really start to sell this image. So thank you for watching that short video on adding a water texture to this view. Um, if you want to go and look at any more videos on texturing in more detail, please check out the kind of videos I have on the channel on material creation in V-Ray and Rhino. I go into a lot more detail on adding in certain materials such as water, glass, shiny sort of metals as well. And there's lots of videos on the channel and I'll put some in the description as well, which might be relevant to adding complexity to a scene like this. So thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you all in the next video.